Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us for another episode of Ask the Expert North Texas. I'm Kristen Diaz. I'm David Rankin. Thank you so much for staying with us. School is starting in the fall, and there's a big promotion for schools everywhere in this country to promote security. And that's where we're going right now on Ask the Expert today. UT Dallas is doing something a little bit unique. And in the KRLD Zoom room, we're speaking with the police chief for UT Dallas, Larry Zacharias. Chief, thank you so much for taking the time. Thank you, David. Let's talk about these cameras that you have put up around UTD. Okay, uh, we learned of these cameras from one of our uh, intercollegiate conferences first, and then uh, learned that University of Texas at Tyler had installed them. And uh, they were very successful uh, in what they were being used for. So we looked into them, uh, had the flock representative come in, made presentations on campus, and we've had 13 of the cameras installed. They're installed at every one of our entrances to the main campus. They are solar powered, cellular, uh, basically a self-contained unit. It takes a photograph of the rear license plate of every vehicle that comes in campus. Uh, runs that license plate through NCIC, and uh, within a matter of seconds, we're notified whether that car is stolen. Uh, the person attached to that car has a protective order. Uh, sex offender has a felony warrant. Uh, we've had uh, one success story earlier in the summer where we got a hit on a car that was actually being driven by a runaway. Uh, we located that student on campus and resolved that situation. How accurate are these readings? For the most part, they're very accurate. Uh, if a license plate is dirty, uh, sometimes it may confuse an N with a W or, or vice versa uh, where we've gotten hits. But we also get, uh, I get a text message. Uh, some of the other uh, admin people get text message or dispatch gets an email. The officers get an email. It also comes up on the mobile data data computers in each one of the squad cars. So if it reads the wrong license plate, it's going to give a description of that license plate. And then when the picture pops up, you can tell and zoom in on that and verify that that's the correct car. And we've had to do that a couple of times. What's been the reaction on campus to these license plate reading cameras? Surprisingly, David, it's been very supportive. Um, I decided I, I speak at all the freshman orientations every summer to the adults and to the new students. I decided I would tell the parents about this new tool that we have and explain what it was. And I said, within seconds, we'll know whether there's a sex offender or a stolen vehicle. And I started rattling off this list, the entire room broke into spontaneous applause. It was really quite a surprise. Yeah, you, you do seem a bit shocked by that. You were expecting a little bit more of a pushback? No, not really a pushback because these are freshmen. These are parents who are sending their students away from home for the very first time. So they do have extra safety concerns. That's why I like to talk to them. I remember when my daughter went to college, I went to orientation. And when the police chief spoke, it made me feel much more comfortable about the campus and the environment. And that's what I try to do with the parents. And I thought this was would be a good example to bring this tool out and let them know about it. And they were very pleased about it. City police departments all over North Texas are doing, are trying to do more for community outreach. Does what you do help with that as well and to help your officers engage with the students? It, it does in more ways than you may know. We have the ability to enter into an agreement with every police department, whether it's a municipal police department, sheriff's department, university police department, into a legal agreement to exchange information. So example, UT uh, Southwestern, UT Arlington is about to get these cameras. We can actually do a search on a vehicle and see how, ever, how, how many other places they have been captured on a flock camera. From that, it, it kind of develops a hotspot. We can tell where that car is located most of the time so that if that's a suspect vehicle, we, we have ideas of where we can go to look for that vehicle. The other thing we can do is we can enter our own hot list. So we have someone on campus in our residential area at two o'clock in the morning. They're not affiliated with the university. They have no business here. We can issue them a criminal trespass 
then enter their license plate information and vehicle information in Flock, and we'll, we will be notified if they come back on campus. Legal. This has happened. If you read the press release, you noticed we had uh, uh, it helped us with a stalking case where a uh, suspect lied to the officer about the vehicle, vehicle he was in, but the victim said that's not his vehicle. We were able to actually do a search mm -hmm. on the vehicle type and color and found his vehicle on campus. So we were able to then recontact him and help resolve that situation as well. It, I, I can only imagine that you have to be kind of delicate when you do find, uh, you know, a, a suspected vehicle and it, it is popped up in your alerts, um, depending on what the camera might have brought up, like you said, a felony warrant or runaway or, or such. Um, are there any types of hurdles that could be presented in the future that you've had to train your police officers to uh, keep in mind when dealing with these cases? Well, it's no different than if they ran a license plate in their car and it came back stolen. Uh, they're trained on how to do felony traffic stops on stolen vehicles or, or felons that are wanted. So the approach and tactics would be the same because most of the time, by the time we find the car, it's still occupied. So they would, they would take the same precautions and same procedures had they checked the license plate on a traffic stop and gotten the same type of return. This is just much faster and much more thorough. Another case that we had was a stolen license plate uh, about one o'clock in the morning. Uh, we found it over in our apartment, one of our apartment complexes. It was reported stolen. Uh, the person that owned the car was the driver, one of our students. He reported his front license plate stolen to one of the mid-cities police departments and forgot to take his rear license plate off and have it uh, check. So he, he was quite surprised when he was surrounded by, by police vehicles at one o'clock in the morning. What precipitated all this, putting up these cameras uh, this particular year? Uh, I th there were several things. One was the information we got from UT Tyler and UT Tyler Health Science. And every time they would get it well, across the UT system, whenever we have a felony arrest, we typically report that to the director of police in Austin, director of UT system police in Austin. He sends that out to the rest of the police chiefs. I started noticing these felony arrests, stolen vehicles, protective orders at UT Tyler Health Science Center. And I called and every one of them was a result of the flock safety system. So I said, we've got to get this thing. If it's that useful and it's finding that many people We'll have on a full class day up to 30,000 cars go in and out of this campus. So that's a lot of vehicles. When we had our commencement exercises last May, we, that's when we got the most, the majority of our hits because there sure. were so many cars coming in during that week. That aren't usually there during the school year. Absolutely. You know, how quick of a response can uh, the reading get out to your officers? Does it go to dispatch and then they reach out to the officers or do they get alert on their phone no, at it, work? Uh, I get a text alert in an email or a coordinator gets a text alert and email dispatch gets an email and then it, it alerts almost instantaneous instantaneously on the computer screens in the squad car. So it's very rapid. It's very quick. I have to imagine there are going to be some privacy advocates that are saying, what are you doing? This is an invasion of privacy. Does this violate the constitution kind of a thing? How do you respond to people that might be talking about that stuff? Well, we, we all are also concerned about privacy. Um, I was the le legislative director for the Texas Police Chief Association several years ago when I was the Richardson chief. And I was very involved in the legislation involving photographic red light enforcement. So I had to deal with all the privacy issues there. So I prepared for it. For this, this is they promote this as a non-bias tool because it's take it's an inanimate object taking a picture of another inanimate object. It doesn't take a picture of, of a person. It takes a picture of a license plate and then it checks that license plate for markers or tags that have been placed on it by another government entity in the in the way of a protective order, sex offender registration, stolen whatever. So uh, it's in a public place. Uh, it's, it's no different than when you go to DFW airport, there's an ALPR camera that takes a picture of your license plate. We don't hear people screaming about it's an invasion of privacy every time you drive down DFW Parkway. Um, for what about 
repoing, does this have any correlation with that as well? We, we don't get involved in repos. Police departments do not get involved other than the repo company may notify dispatch. I've got papers to repo this car. And sometimes they don't notify you that until after they've taken the car. So we're not involved in, in repos. Chief Larry Zacharias from the University of Texas at Dallas Police Department. Thank you so much for taking the time to explain this. It's been my pleasure. Thank you.